Light is stranger than you imagine. Welcome back to our channel, where we delve into the mysteries of the universe and explore the wonders of science. Today, we have an intriguing topic to discuss, one that will challenge your perception of reality and leave you in awe. Welcome to, Light is Stranger Than You Imagine. Light is far stranger than you might imagine. It may appear simple enough to move around the universe, distributing energy from one location to another. It aids our vision. It sustains plant life and hence our world in general. It is known for being extremely quick. Light, despite being a source of energy that has become synonymous with increased understanding, is surprisingly difficult to comprehend. Sure, light improves our ability to see other things. However, scientists found it unexpectedly difficult to study light itself. No, I don't mean they began staring into lamps. Please do not attempt this at home. However, research over the last 200 years have shown that what light looks to be and what light is are not the same thing. Light acts differently when you're not looking at it than when you are for one simple reason, which is frustrating. What exactly is the nature of light? Why does it act weirdly while we are not looking? And what does it reveal about the nature of the universe? This is Information 01 and in today's video, we'll try to find out. Let us shed some light on the subject of light. Let's start with the fundamentals. What exactly is light? Isaac Newton proposed in the early 1700s that light was made up of microscopic small particles called corpuscles. However, about 100 years later, in 1801, a man named Thomas Young found that light must be more wave-like than particle-like. He demonstrated this with an important technique known as the double-slit experiment. He put up a light source and directed it through two thin slots onto a board. Instead of two bands of light on the other side of the apertures, Young noticed a weird striped pattern forming. This was known as an interference pattern, and it was unmistakable proof that light was moving as a wave. Why? For a moment, consider waves. Waves oscillate up and down as they travel. However, interference occurs when two waves attempt to oscillation the same location in space at the same moment. Assume you have a bathtub with a rubber duck on the surface. Two waves hit the duck at the same time. One wave attempts to lift the duck. At the same time, the other wave attempts to knock it down. So, what happens? If the waves have the same magnitude but are completely out of phase, they cancel each other out and the duck does not move. This is referred to as detrimental interference. Similarly, if both waves try to lift the duck at the same time, the duck will be lifted twice as high. This is referred to as constructive interference. Because waves extend in a circle, two waves near to each other will begin to overlap. Both constructive and detrimental interference occurs. Here are two water waves. Have you noticed these lines? These camera patches represent when the waves cancel one other out. This is the effect produced by light passing through the two slits. At certain points, the light from one slit cancels out the other wave of light. Points, resulting in the interference pattern seen on the board by Young. So the enigma had been solved. Light was a wave rather than a particle. There is, however, more to this experiment than meets the eye. Let's go back another 100 years to 1905. Around this time, scientists were perplexed by something known as the photoelectric effect. It was discovered that when a light was shown on a metal surface, electron-like particles were emitted. This was determined to be due to electrons in the metal being knocked off by the extra energy imparted by the light. Consider it as a fruit on a tree. A certain amount of energy is required to pull the fruit off the tree. When the energy exceeds the strength of the fruit's attachment to the branch, the fruit pops off. This was occurring with light and electrons. When the light struck an electron and provided it with enough energy to cross the threshold, it broke out from the metal. What astonished scientists was that increasing the intensity of the light caused the electrons to be knocked away faster. The fruit would fall off the tree faster if you yanked it harder. Greater energy equals greater kinetic energy exiting. This, however, did not appear to be the case. Increasing the frequency of the light, on the other hand, 
increase the velocity of the outgoing electrons. The intensity of the light had no effect on the velocity of the outgoing electrons, but it did impact the number of electrons expelled. It was a bit perplexing. The puzzle was solved by Albert Einstein. He determined that light must travel in little energy packets, thus transmitting more of them, increasing the frequency, was the only way to increase the energy traveling to the electrons. He dubbed these packets photons and was later awarded the Nobel Prize for his efforts. Light appeared to be more like a particle once more. Or both a wave and a particle at the same time. Of course, this is not the entire picture. To be honest, we're still not sure what the whole picture is. Instead, we see more contradicting results. Return to the double slit experiment. Using their understanding of photons, scientists revisited the double slit experiment. In the last century, experimental techniques had advanced to the point where it was now able to emit a single photon of light at a time. The double slit experiment was repeated. This time, only one photon would pass through the slit and land on a detector on the other side. When this was done, the detector only registered the photon's arrival at a single spot. So light was acting like a particle once more. But how come it had interfered with itself in the prior edition of the experiment? Scientists had a thought. They ran numerous photons through the detector one at a time and charted the results. And this is where the outcome became quite weird. The detector began to notice photons coming at single spots one at a time once more. Surprisingly, the arriving photon began to create a pattern. It was the pattern of interference. The demonstration that light acted like a wave. But, interestingly, this only happened when a single photon passed through at a time. The single photon, which left the detector like a particle and arrived at its destination like a particle, was evidently going through both slits at the same time. Enough to cause a wave-like interference on the other side. If light were just a particle, you wouldn't notice this pattern when it passed through the slits. There would only be two blobs of light visible, one for particles that passed through the slit and another for particles that passed through the other. But here was the interference pattern, with its many lines of light, proving otherwise. Scientists attempted to pinpoint light. They repeated the experiment, but this time with two extra detectors at the slit to see if it was truly flowing through both at the same time. It didn't work. At the same time, it ceased producing an interference pattern on the farthest detector. Scientists began to notice anything as a result of this. Light was concerned with being watched. To be clear, it made no difference whether it was observed by a human or a machine. There was no other method to view light until it was interacted with in some way, by any particle, which is the only way we can sense light. It began to act differently than if it had not been noticed at all. It seemed as though light was popping into focus whenever the universe asked it where it was. Without the inspection, it seemed to soften into something a little more hazy. Surprisingly, this appears to imply that light is more like a wave of probability than any discrete particle or wave. It confidently supplied a precise answer whenever it was asked where it was. It was on the detector at this time. It wasn't any other time. However, with no one monitoring it, light appears to be flowing in all directions at once in line with certain probability. You might quantify those probabilities if you repeated the experiment several times, determining that it was more likely to be on the bands of the interference pattern and less likely to be in the gaps. When a single photon of light was asked a question, it gave a 100% solid answer. This is exemplified by what is known as the three polarizer paradox. Consider polarizing sunglasses for a second. These obviously reduce the amount of light that can flow through them, typically by roughly 50% depending on the type of lens and the wavelength of light. They function by forming narrow chains of molecules that run lengthwise across the lens. This lens absorbs any light that oscillates in the same orientation as it. Any perpendicular to the chains can pass through with ease. When a single photon passes through an orientation diagonal to the lens, an interesting instance occurs. In this situation, you don't even obtain half a photon. Apparently, 
You can't merely absorb the part of the oscillation that is parallel to the lines and let the other part pass through. Instead, the photon either snaps into one direction or the other. It is either completely absorbed or goes through completely, but with a new perpendicular polarization to match what it would have needed to pass through smoothly. How do we know the photon was not always in this orientation? Because of what occurs when you begin to add more lenses. If you position a second lens behind the first, you can completely block out the light, as long as the two polarizations are perpendicular to each other. Assume we rotate the second lens 90 degrees in relation to the first. Any light that passes through the first lens has no chance of passing through the second, which is analogous to trying to post a letter through a chain-link fence. As a result, we just perceive black. However, if a third lens is placed at a 45-degree angle between the other two, light begins to pass through all three lenses again. This may appear to be counterintuitive. How can increasing the number of obstructions enhance the amount of light that passes through? However, this result eliminates the hypothesis that the light has a fixed orientation. It must be focusing at each new lens, rolling a quantum dice to see if it was the correct orientation all along. If it makes it through the first lens, which is a 50% chance, it did so only because it was absolutely perpendicular to the polarization of the lens. That is, once it reaches the second, it is approaching it from a diagonal polarization. So, once again, it has a 50-50 probability of making it through. It rolls the quantum dice again and has a 50-50 probability of continuing. If it passes this test, it will again snap to the new orientation, as if it had always been that way, which it clearly did not. This implies it's now polarized diagonally relative to the third lens, giving it a last 50% chance of passing through. Of course, some photons do not make it through all three of these probabilistic gauntlets, only around 12.5% do, but that's better than 0%, which was the case when you only had two lenses. Light prefers to behave in discrete amounts. It's called quantum. When seen, it appears to snap to a discrete value, and we honestly don't know why. If you consider a wave, there is no reason why you couldn't have half of one. You could divide it in half an unlimited number of times and still get a mathematically correct answer. Yet, on a small enough quantum scale, it appears that you can't half light past a certain point, or even half a photon or even one and a half photons. If you try, the photon instead snaps to one of the nearby integers depending on probability, but only when prompted. Otherwise, it's perfectly satisfied to live probabilistically, interfering with itself like a wave as it goes, until leaping to an answer when asked where it is. What exactly is going on here? This is still being discussed. The closest analogy we have is harmonics, in which only a certain number of waves may exist on a restricted string. A guitar string can have one, two, or more waves, but never a number that isn't a whole number. Light appears to work in the same way. Perhaps something pinches the beginning and end of the path light goes down, however what this could be and what mechanisms drive it remain unclear for the time being. Fundamentally, the most bizarre aspect of all of this is that it isn't just about light. Although we focused on light behaving like a wave and in a probabilistic manner, all particles of matter behave similarly. Light is simply another kind of energy, and energy and matter are inextricably intertwined. Wavelengths have been discovered in materials, atoms, and even complex compounds. Electrons, like photons, are quantifiable and driven by probabilities. If you scale things down small enough, it appears that we are all driven by probability. So, what exactly is everything comprised of? What makes up energy and matter, causing it to act as it does? What is going on behind the surface of reality? Why does the cosmos behave differently when observed than when not observed? And what does it mean to believe that you, too, are probabilistic? What all of this signifies is anyone's guess. The guy who finds it out will be our generation's Einstein. But for the time being, all we can say is that the cosmos appears to be playing dice when it comes to reality. You and the world around you may be far less certain than you think.
In conclusion. As we wrap up today's journey into the enigmatic world of light, we hope you've gained a newfound appreciation for this astounding phenomenon. From its incredible speed to the captivating dance of colors, light continues to be a source of wonder and endless exploration. Remember, this is only scratching the surface of the intricacies and mysteries that light holds. So, keep seeking knowledge, keep questioning, and let your imagination be ignited by the ever-strange and mesmerizing world of light. Thank you for joining us today. Remember to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on the wonders of science and the mysteries of the universe. Until next time, keep your curiosity alive.